ancient Greece, an age-old civilization founded in blood. Some of the most epic battles in history were fought here. And at their heart was a brutal fighting style thought lost for almost 2,000 years. A martial art so vicious that its practitioners would rather fight to the death than admit defeat. Its name, Pancration. We're here to learn from the masters who rediscovered this ancient blood sport. And ultimately, one of us will be put to the test in a Pancration fight against one of its most awesome champions. There are hundreds of distinct fighting styles in the world. They are practiced in every nation and by every people. Now, Jason Chambers, a mixed martial artist and professional fighter. And Bill Duff, a former pro football player and wrestler. Are embarked on a mission to explore the history and techniques of these incredible martial arts. And at the end of each journey, one of these two warriors will face the ultimate test. They'll try to survive a real fight with a true human weapon. This is Athens, capital city of Greece and symbol of a great civilization. Over 25 centuries before the United States was born, the Greeks were building temples, palaces, and theaters. They founded modern philosophy, mathematics, and medicine. But the Greeks were fighters too. They had to be. This region was in a constant state of conflict for over 500 years. The Persians, the Romans, the Turks, the Goths, the Vandals, they all fought to conquer this land. To survive, the Greeks created a martial art so efficient and modern, it's hard to believe it comes from an ancient civilization. We've come to this nighttime tournament to get our first look at the reborn fighting style of Pancration. Oh, oh, we got a fight on our hands now. Oh, <laughs> he got kicked in the head, yeah. When they start wrestling, it makes me want to just get out there on the mat. I mean, these guys are tough, but I just want to pick them up and slam them myself. <laughs> I'm holding Bill back. Make peace with the Greeks. Oh. Translated as all powers, pancration means exactly that. Anything goes. Punches, takedowns, throws, and joint locks are used in punishing combinations by Pancratius to force an opponent into submission. Pancration was one of the world's first mixed martial arts, and its techniques are just as effective today as they were thousands of years ago. In ancient Greece, even the philosophers were fighters. Socrates himself was a soldier and may have trained in the battlefield precursor to Pancration. In the Greek armies, every soldier had to buy his own armor and his own weapons but thousands of soldiers just couldn't afford even the most basic equipment. So their only choice became unarmed combat to the death. But like all civilizations, the Greek states eventually fell. From the third century BC onwards, Greece began to collapse. And a few centuries later, the city-states were gone. And so was Pancration. For 1,600 years, the fighting art was lost to the world. Then, in the 1970s, an American named Jim Arvanitas attempted to reconstruct the ancient art. But pancreation really took off in 1995, as Greek scholars and athletes began using archaeological evidence to bring this ancient fighting style out of a legendary past and into a brutal present. On the beach, we met Laz Savides, a Pancration trainer and a leading expert in its revival. So how did Pancration first get its start? Well, actually, we have been in a lot of research in the last 15 years, and, uh, and we just exclude everything that it was not included in that. Ancient vases, sculptures, statues, and started making this program that you see here. So really, the culture and the art took a, took a big role in you finding out what Pancration was, right? Yeah. Today, 
There are around 1,500 Pancratius training and fighting in Greece. They stay true to the history and techniques of the deadly original, with just a few changes for safety. Hand strikes to the head are illegal, but full force kicks are just fine. Definitely not like a Western boxer. Ooh. I guarantee you he comes back with something now. Like mixed martial arts, Pancration fights can be won by submission or knockout. And like boxing and karate, points are awarded for contact, techniques, and difficulty of the move executed. After watching these Pancration fights, Loss gave us a challenge. Learn the techniques of Pancration and fight. Konstantino Skepernakos, a Pancration champion and member of the Greek Special Forces. There's a good chance he's going to give one of us a real beating. My schedule's clear. OK, what about you? Sounds good. OK, <laughs> that's good. Then it's a Great. deal. Our training began first thing the next morning as we headed down Athens' back alleys in search of the world-famous Malios Gym. The gym was founded by George Malios, a kickboxing legend and expert striker. George is one of the handful of men dedicated to making Pancration world famous again. Malios began by demonstrating some of his signature kicks and punches. Known as Krohirimos, these standing strikes are used to weaken an opponent before taking them to the ground. We begin with the straight punch. Used for close range combat, the hands are kept high to protect the head. The fists are driven in straight, quick jabs at the target. The goal isn't to score a knockout, but to gauge distance and keep your opponent in front of you at all times. Now this is a little bit different than say Western boxing because you don't see hooks and uppercuts. It leaves you open for takedowns from different angles. These punches are all direct to your opponent. You get him moving back. Okay. Direct and it's to the point. Yeah. After giving our fist yeah. a good workout, Malio showed us another stand-up strike. But this one wasn't about keeping distance. It was about winning a fight. It's called the gas treason or this gut kick. Yeah. Exactly this point is your target. So you're afraid to be between these lines. And your heel, use your heel. One of the most powerful offensive moves we'd ever seen. The gas treason is a straight line kick to an opponent's midsection. The attacker's knee and foot are chambered like a piston and then stomped into the opponent's stomach, genitals, or thighs. Unlike most kicks that land with the side, ball, or top of the foot, the gastrizin uses the heel to deliver the blow. This alignment of the heel, ankle, lower leg complex channels some 2,000 pounds of force into the opponent, more than enough to break a baseball bat. I like that. According to legend, ancient Greek soldiers perfected these kicks to the point where they could smash through an opponent's shield. But it wasn't just a story. George offered to demonstrate. Oh. All right. Even though we had just learned it, I decided to give it a try. Some guy kicked it. Oh man, that's tough. I was just kicking it flat. Here? Yes, yes. Ready? One, two, three. Thanks. American muscle wins every time. But shield kicking is just the beginning of our quest to prepare ourselves to face the champion. Religion and violence always went hand in hand here in ancient Greece. To experience that link ourselves, Jason and I headed west, across the Isthmus of Corinth, to the Temple of Zeus at Nemea. This is one of the oldest and most revered locations of the classical Greek world. Before a battle, soldiers would slaughter animals on the steps of this temple and pray that the blood of the sacrifice would please the gods. 
Though Pancratia may have been born in war, it found its greatest fame as a sport. Soon after the Greeks founded the Olympic Games in 700 BC, Pancratia moved from the battlefield to the stadium. Beneath the city's famed Temple of Zeus, we met Dr. Emmanuel Mikzagianakis, who tells us the story of the so-called heavy games at the Olympics. So why did they call them the heavy games? Because there were no great uh, requirements, and the heaviest, most uh, powerful, were the first in the sport. Did you hear that, little guy? Whatever, Bill. Everything would stop for the games, including war. Thousands of spectators would gather from all over the Greek world to watch the brutal fights. One fighter from Sishion was nicknamed Fingertips because he'd start each fight by breaking his opponent's fingers. Strictly a men-only event, any woman caught even watching the Olympics was thrown off a cliff. The games were sometimes blood events. They were very dangerous. Death was not excluded. But the champions were crowned with uh, laurel leaves. And they had their names written in stone pillars. MMA fighters and other martial artists today use the signal of tapping out to show their submission to the opponent. And it was here in the Olympic Pancration fights that a form of tapping out was invented. But it was considered the greatest humiliation a fighter could face, and many chose to die rather than end the bout in disgrace. The most common cause of death in these Olympic fights was suffocation caused by fighters in chokes refusing to tap out. To train for our chance at glory, we headed to the neighboring valley of Argos, home to some of ancient Greece's greatest Pancration athletes. There, we met Nectarios Lycodopoulos and a group of students engaged in a fierce sparring practice. I recognized these moves from my own MMA experience. These guys are taking these guys down quick. Rolling knee bar, double legs. It's amazing how similar this ancient Greek fighting style is to modern MMA. So you guys aren't real big on throwing a strike. You just want to get in there and take them down, huh? We are giving emphasis to the takedown because I, we believe that the takedown is the half uh, winning. Yeah. It's half of winning the takedown? Yeah. All right. Or half of losing, depending on what side you're on. Nectarios tells us that like modern MMA, more than half of modern pancreation fights end up on the ground. And that means some of the most important maneuvers in a pancreatus arsenal are takedowns to drop an opponent to the mat and kick off a ground offensive. Sounds like just the tools we need to face a champ. We began with one of the most effective throws, the Arpog Padayan, or double leg takedown. To execute the takedown requires perfect timing. Eyeing an opening, the Pancratius drops low and penetrates his opponent's defense. Grab his legs, bring the other foot together. Using the power of his hips and thighs, he lifts his opponent straight up into the air before body slamming him back to the ground. The higher you can lift your opponent in this move, the faster he'll hit the ground. It's not just your force working against him. His acceleration due to gravity can mean his head hits the ground with a 3,500 pound impact. On a hard surface like concrete, this is more than enough to cause a serious brain injury. Put your hand up with his shoulder back. When you have it here, use your head to sink him. Seems simple enough with my football and wrestling experience. Under the punch, in. Okay. Oh, double leg up. Sink him. Very nice. Double leg takedown is great. Once you get a hold of his legs, you drive up and through, use a lot of the same power used on a football field when you're driving through a block, get him up and slam him down. Then once he's on the mat, it's all wrestling from there, baby. So that's cool now if the guy is punching. Uh, a lot of times when you're fighting, you don't have 
time to do that because you're clinched, like you're in here. Yes. So is there a move that you guys really like to use that works really well from the yes, clinch? Yes, there are some moves. Usually use uh, the shoulder throw. On Pankradion, we call it Ripsi Omu. Okay. Shoulder throw. Can I see it? The shoulder throw begins in a clinch, but instead of holding your opponent, you reach up and hook his forearm while simultaneously turning his back and pulling him forward and off balance. Once he's moving, you get your hips under his and roll your torso forward, heaving him up and over your shoulder. Like a throw in judo, this move demonstrates the effectiveness of combining two simple machines to achieve a complex task. First, the opponent's arm works as a lever to optimize your control. Second, your own back serves as a pivot point for the throw. The strength and stability of your back allows you to throw a much heavier opponent than in a move that requires you to lift him. I'm going to come in striking. God, I got to stop eating so much food. And try to, to trap his hand here. OK. Here, here. And then I'm stepping here. Uh huh. Hips low. Exactly. Here. And then yes. the arm bar. Crack it like a stick. Very nice. There you go. Yep. There you go. This is a really good move to use if the guy that I'm fighting is going to be bigger than me because I'm going to be able to use his own size advantage against him. This is actually a lot like a judo throw we learned. Is it kind of similar, like where you step in and you're throwing them, the only difference, of course, I guess? similar. Actually, it's a move, it's a technique. You can uh, see it in many martial arts around the world. Some historians believe judo may have gotten the technique from Pancration by way of one of the greatest Greeks in history, Alexander the Great. They didn't call him great for nothing. By the age of 33, he'd conquered pretty much every country in the civilized world. His soldiers would have trained in the Greek martial art of Pancratia and brought their knowledge with them as they conquered. Some historians credit Alexander with spreading Pancratia to India following his invasion in 326 BC. From India, Buddhist monks may have brought aspects of the art to China which in turn planted the seed for all Asian martial arts, including Kung Fu, Karate, and Muay Thai. Between our stand-up strikes and throws, we're beginning to feel pretty confident about the standing portion of the fight. Now it's time to learn how to survive when the fight goes to the ground. For our next move, we're gonna train with a former bodyguard and MMA cage fighter and learn a technique that comes from the toughest warriors in Greek history, the Spartans. This is Dimitri Glazakos, a direct descendant of Spartan warriors. A former bodyguard and MMA fighter, Dimitri is an expert in ancient Greek close quarter combat. Now, would this be the type of knives that like a Spartan would carry back in the day? Yeah, it is very heavy. Oh, wow. This thing is really heavy. Over a foot long and weighing almost seven pounds, these short swords were designed to cause the maximum amount of damage. But Spartans had other ways to do damage, too. Spartan soldiers had to train in Pancration for 23 fanatical years, starting at the age of seven. They were such serious fighters, they boycotted the Olympics because eye gouging and biting were forbidden. Instead, Spartan soldiers used their unique form of pancration for just one thing, to kill an opponent on the battlefield. In ancient warfare, two lines of armored soldiers would meet in a clash of shields. In the chaos of battle, it was all too easy to lose both your weapon and your footing and find yourself on the ground. But because of the armor, strikes were of limited use. So the Spartans developed other killer moves. So I guess this would pretty much break his neck, huh? Exactly. So these are some of the grappling moves that you would incorporate if it went to the ground? Yeah, yeah. 
Works for me, Bill. Yeah, they look great. Can you show us some of them? Yes, we have to go to the gym, I think, and do some work. Okay. Let's go to the gym. Back at the gym, Dimitri told us that the first step to Spartan ground fighting was securing dominant body position. Try to go down. Known as passing the guard in MMA circles, the key is to shoot past the legs, plant a knee, and destroy your opponent on the ground. So we've seen a lot of statues of the Greek soldiers. They have another guy with his arm behind his back. You know, it's, it's really iconic. Is there a move like that in pancreation we can use? Yes, we'll, we'll do something similar. This was our first ground maneuver, a killer joint attack inspired by a Spartan disarming technique called the Akrosha Reason or shoulder lock, and it hurt. So is this what you're talking about, Bill? Yeah. Is this the move? This is it. Are you sure? Yeah. Want to see it again? No. Nope. OK. For this shoulder lock, you first throw your opponent to the ground. When he's there, so squeeze his head move? between your thighs and twist his arm behind his back, locking the shoulder joint and leaving him at your mercy. So this, this puts pressure on the shoulder. Exactly. Bill, does it feel like there's pressure there? Yeah. This move uses your opponent's arm as a lever working against him. The greater the torque on his shoulder, the greater the pain inflicted. And exceeding the joint's normal range of motion causes more than just pain. The soft tissue, muscles, and the bone can all be seriously damaged by this pressure. I'm nailing here, I'm hitting. He's giving this up here. You turn it, you're getting on both your knees, right? It's really hot in here, sweaty, nasty mats, you get burns all over your faces, and training that shoulder lock's really gonna help me, because if I get that guy in that right position, now I know where to place my hands, tighten the knees, hold them down, and break that shoulder. Fight will be over really quick. This move is designed to make an opponent submit, and is inspired by the bone-breaking maneuvers of the battlefield. It was techniques like this that helped Sparta crush their enemies. Perhaps Sparta's most famous battle took place in 480 BC. Just 300 Spartan soldiers fought a heroic last stand in Thermopylae against an invading army of an estimated 200,000 Persians. With over 600 Persians for every Spartan soldier, these were impossible odds. But unbelievably, they held out for three days. And when they lost their swords and shields, all they had left was pancreation. The brutality and strength of the Spartans has never been forgotten and continues to inspire soldiers to this day. And the moves they use continue to be part of the MMA fighters' arsenal. Moves like the Achilles leg lock that Dimitri taught us next. So you're using the ridge of your forearm right underneath the back of his soft tendon. And then by pulling your shoulder back and pulling it up. back, and then I turn a little. It puts but pressure. Have, yes, I put pressure also here with my knees. The move begins with your opponent on his back. After breaking his guard, you trap his ankle against your torso and lock your arms against the back of his legs, right on the Achilles tendon. Then, falling backwards, you lock your own thighs around your opponent's trapped leg. The goal of this lock is to stretch the tendons at the top of the foot to the breaking point. The strongest tendons have a tensile force threshold of just over 400 pounds. Applying any more pressure than that can tear the tendons from their base or snap them in two. Just here. See, you got it on Yeah, here, here. Dump Yeah? Yeah. Oh, OK. And that. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to, to make this move work. Bill's got all of his body weight behind it, just a little lift of the hips and pull back of the shoulder, and I'm limping out of the, the ring. Stop here, and turn, 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 turn. And do it. Yeah? And do it like This is like your old pro wrestling days, Bill. This move is really technical. It's really difficult for me. I like it. If I could get it in, I think it's something I can use. But it's such a speedy move, and it's such a technical move. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, and you go for it, and you fall back, and the guy's slippery, you're in a race to see who punches someone in the face first. 
Which is why Dimitri told Jason and I we needed practice in a real fight right now. Jason was up first. Pancration is so close to my MMA background, I'm able to dominate this guy pretty fast. Feels great. That's the shoulder lock we learned. Guess it works. Then it was my turn. This guy was a colossus. You gonna try to get under those elbows. Shh. There you go. Now use it, suck it, suck it. Hips, hips, hips. Pass the water. I was trying to use the leg lock we just learned, but I just wasn't fast enough. It's really nice to go against another heavyweight. Most of the time I'm stuck with the little guys, but he had great strength, real compact, good power. So it led to a really interesting match. I tried to go for some of the shoulder locks, but he was really strong. He fished out on me and kept those arms in. You know, maybe a couple more minutes, it would have turned out differently, but we do have a fight coming up. With our stand-up strikes, our throws, and our bone-breaking joint locks, our pancreation arsenal is finally filling out. But we have a long way to go if we want to be ready to face a pancreation champ in the ring. To get ready, we're going to one of the most ancient fortresses in Greece. There, we'll experience exactly the same brutal training used on fighters nearly 3,000 years ago, before they faced death in the arena. The Greek poets wrote epic verses about the beauty of these mountains. But we're here to learn how to kill. Our destination, Igosthena Castle to join one of the toughest martial arts training regimes in the world. Dating to the 4th century BC, it's one of the oldest standing fortresses in Greece. And a hell of a climb to get up to. The Greeks invent philosophy, diplomacy, theater, but no elevators. There better be a princess at the top of this. No princess, but we did find the camp of Aris Macris a world-renowned pancreation master and an expert in ancient Hellenic training. Don't let him move away from you, and then he's got all this room to turn around on you. You move in, you stick with him when he's going down. This is a form of pancreation as close to the ancients as we possibly can. What we try to do is basically go with full use of our weaponry, our legs, our fists, our knees, and then going for the initial takedown as we weaken the opponent. So you guys put all the different elements together, the grappling, the submissions, the striking, the clinch, the wrestling. That's right, that's what pancreation is. It means total skill. Perfect. Aris invited us to train with him and his guys, but the invitation came with a warning. You know, you have to understand that the ancient Hellenics, they trained harder in their methods than the actual competition itself because the competition was so brutal. So if you guys can hack what the ancient Hellenics were capable of doing, I don't think you'd have a problem. For Jenga to do that standing here, gentlemen, you gotta move your butts out and get changed. Let's go. All right, Captain. All right. Let's go get changed. Let's go. Get back here. We quickly realized pancreation wasn't just about moves. It was about preparing your body for battle. Okay. To do that, Aris plunged us right into an ancient Greek conditioning routine. This was like nothing we'd experienced in a gym. No weights, no treadmills, just the tools used by fighters more than 2,000 years ago. First, we drilled with a 150-pound log to bulk up our shoulder and back muscles. After that, we bench-pressed each other's dead weight for 50 rep intervals. Everybody gets your stern. Nobody bows out. Let's go. Move. Let's go. Don't bow out, Chambers. Here, how many pounds? 3,412. Let's go. Put it up. Needless to say, this was a little easier for me than for Jason. Shh. Nine. Come on. Come on. Push. Up. Come on, Jason. Up. Push. Push. Come on, Jason. Push him. Push him. Push him up. Push. Push. Oh. Push. Nice. What do you think of that exercise? It's like bench pressing a pickup. Then we had a five-mile run across the rocky terrain around the castle's perimeter. 
Let's go, pick it up, pick it up. It was a hell of a warm up. But Aris reminded us that endurance was key to becoming a true Greek athlete. There's something that in, uh, in the Greek world we call the inner pnevma. And that is when you gotta reach deep down inside and you gotta be able to bring that inner most deep energy that you've got out. So you gotta be able to work while you're exhausted. It's when you're exhausted that you can determine whether or not you're a good fighter. And so the training continued. To perfect our coordination and strengthen our punches, we hurled 15-pound stones, deadlifted 200-pound urns, shin-kicked and elbowed logs wrapped in twine. 17, 18, 19, 20. And pounded sacks of sand pushing our bodies to the limit to prepare ourselves for the punishment of full contact pancreation. Nice and smooth, very good. I'm more sore today than I have ever been working out at a gym. I'm sore in places I didn't know I could be sore. Finally, as evening set in, Aris invited us back inside the castle to mend our aching bodies by the fire and enjoy a traditional pancreation dinner. This is exactly what they used to eat, high protein, high fiber, low carbs, and even the type of carbs that they had was very natural. And because it was all stone mill back then, it uh, provided a lot of energy. So these guys really knew how to eat for fighting. Yes, they did. They the, and it was amazing to think that nearly 3,000 years ago, the ancient Greeks knew just as much as we did about what to eat to strengthen and repair the body. The protein in the meal would help rebuild the microscopic tears we'd put in our muscles during the day's training and the balance of fiber and carbohydrates would give us energy for our next day. And we'd need it. The next morning, Bill and I woke up early to spar like the ancients. Aris taught us that the key to winning an ancient pancreation fight wasn't any single move. It was the combinations. Learning to transition effortlessly from standing strikes to throws to grappling and ultimately to a choke that could end the fight or your opponent's life. Here's my first window of opportunity. Here's my second window of opportunity. This is where I come in this way. Are you in? That's it, Greg. Turn them over right away. Turn them over. Pick them up. That's it. Right up. Go for One, two. That's it. All the way around. Take them. Flip off this way. I have a hard time once I get a hold of the neck letting it go. That's a good you know? thing, man. <laughs> That's a good thing. Pancreatus were headhunters to begin with. Right down. Wrap your arms right around. There you go. So you're pulling him backwards. You're cranking him up. Slip jabbing right under. Tug his face to the... After the sparring, it was back to the mountaintop trails for more Spartan-style conditioning but with a twist. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Move, move, move. Now, we had to run with a man on our backs, learning to keep our balance, even with the additional weight. After the run, it was back to our old school condition. And then, as the sun went down, it was time for another round of sparring. Slip into that shit. Now pull his head, that's it. Use your wrist to pull him back. I didn't know there were so many ways to work out not having modern equipment. These are unique ways to train for a fight. 14, and I feel trained, 15. and I'm coming for this guy. There was so much left to learn of this ancient fighting art, but training was over. Now it was time for our final challenge, a chance for one of us to step onto the mat for a fight with a true Pancration champion. Wherever you go in Greece, you're never far from thousands of years of history. And it's a violent history. The ancient Greek martial art of pancreation was used here in combat and in deadly games. Now it was our turn to experience this ancient form of MMA in a full contact match 
against a real Pancration expert. The fight would be held at the Zapion in the heart of Athens. It was in this actual building in 1896 that the Olympic Games started up again after a hiatus of 2,000 years. Inside, we met with Laz and his fighter, Konstantinos hey, Skepernakos. See you again? Good to see you too. Yes. Hey, welcome once you? again. Thank welcome you. once again. How are you? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah, he's one of, the, uh, of our world champions. And he was actually serving in special forces in Greece. So this is the guy that you have for us to fight? What do you think? What we thought was Constantino looks big and fast. With almost three millennia of combat heritage behind him, he had the confidence of a true fighter and a true champion. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him was definitely going to be quite a challenge. To decide which one of us would fight, we took a cue from the ancients and let the gods decide. Now, let's do it the customary way that they did in ancient Greece. Aris told us that in the ancient Olympics, fighters were selected by drawing lots from an urn. Each fighter's initials were inscribed on a lot. The athletes whose lot was pulled would fight. These don't all say Bill, do they? Okay. There's, there's D's and J's. All right, ready? It's a J. It's a... That's a B. See, but in Greek, B actually stands for J. Okay, anyway, that's fair. That's the way we're gonna do it. All right, it. you know what? Seed. My uniform. Here's your, your robe. Thank you. I'm in your corner. Right. Getting loosened up, I kept my mind on the techniques we practiced, thinking through how to use moving, them. We're moving our hands are up, our hands are up. Our elbows are in, in. Yes. Good. Tell you what, it feels great warming up for this fight. It felt great going all around Greece and learning this stuff. I'm hot, I'm ready. Got Jason in my corner, he's gonna be there for me. You ready, brother? Let's do it, Bill. Let's go. The fight would have three rounds of two minutes each. There would be no hand strikes to the head or groin, but kicks to the head and knees to the body were allowed. A knockout, submission, or broken limb would automatically end the match. But it would also be scored by a referee. Points would be awarded for strikes, throws, and pins. And they would be deducted for illegal moves, punches and elbows to the face, and slams from a pin position. Remember, he's going to be moving around a lot, so look for that kick to get it out of the way, get an angle, and take him down, OK? And then just breathe, all right, baby? All right. My strategy for the first round was simple. Look for opportunities to use what I learned and stay loose and get a feel for my opponent. What I got going, was a good get feel get of his there. foot inside my head. Get in there, Bill. Three points for Constantino. It was obvious he planned to stay on his feet and rack up points with strikes. Now, use that. Use but that. I wanted to use my Spartan ground techniques. Get on top. Nice. I got two points for the takedown and another two for Keep the working, pin. Bill. Bill, work your left knee on his belly. Get your left knee on his belly. There, knee on his belly. I want you to work for mount. There you go. Now go over to mount. Go over to mount. Go over to mount. Mount. Nice. Stay on his back. Bill, circle outside of his lead leg. Now you circle left. Whatever leg he's got in front, circle the other way. I charged him, but Constantino caught me with a sneaky sacrifice throw. Hitting a three-ton stone column is not the best way to break your fall. Three points for him. With another reset, it was right back to the ground. Constantino was slippery. It was all I could do to keep him pinned to the mat. Work to mount, mount. You can hit him, Bill. You can hit his back. You can hit just not to the spine. Use your body to turn his head back in. There you go. Keep doing that. Keep, keep cranking. There you go. Keep walking him. Walking back. Good. Walking back. A little more, Bill. A little more. One more. One, one more for me. One more. And the first round was over. My throws and wrestling moves were giving me the edge, but I had to watch his strikes. And keep your hands up, because he had a point for that kick. Yeah, no, the only kick me right in the face. Because that was three points. I think you have six to three, it could be wrong, but you're definitely up on points. I had to be careful of penalties. I'd learn a lot of pancration moves, but not a lot of rules. Keep it tight, keep it tight. Keep it tight. All right, right now. So we're to the I began the second round trying Constantino's game, laying in some quick low kicks. 
and when he got close, I clinched him up and started going to town with my knees. Three more points for me. Now shoot it double. There you go, Bill. It's all right. Clint, get inside, get inside. Constantino shoved me off the mat into a collar. I'd split my toe wide open go, on sharp marble. With my adrenaline way up, I didn't even notice till I saw the blood. In the birthplace of Socrates, I was trying to be philosophical about it. So my toe has been uh, marginalized by the marble, but that won't stop me. I don't know how many stitches it's gonna take, but not enough to keep me from going back out there. After some iodine and a bandage, I was back in the fight. Constantino kept trying to fling me out of bounds. But I was too smart for that. Like a Spartan, I wanted to take the fight back to the ground. So I repaid him for the split toe by grabbing him by the collar and drilling him into the floor. I had become his nemesis. Slamming a pinned opponent was legal in ancient Greece. But it turns out times have changed. I had just lost three points. So you can't slam him when you're on the ground. He took a penalty point for you? OK? I wish I could slam him like I was doing, because five or six more of those, his mouth would have been a bloody mess. That penalty cost me. Constantino was now up 10 to 9. I had some ground to make up. Time to finish this thing. Constantino began round three by firing off some fast punches and kicks. I meant to aim for his body, but my old school pancreation training took over, and I landed a right to his jaw. Another penalty. Uh, Bill, he's saying you hit him in the head, and that's a no-no. Same thing, right to us, and I want to see a takedown. Look for that takedown. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Come on, stay busy, Bill. Let's go. Now take it, take that, take that. Leg sweep, now take it. There you go, keep doing that. Keep, keep breaking, there you go, keep passing. He was too slippery, so I passed his guard, secured dominant body position, and attempted a shoulder roll. Yes! Get your left elbow on the other side of his head. This was a gift from the yes, gods. Get your elbow on the other side of his head. No, 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 Bill, 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 get on top, get on top. He kept rolling on me. Punch, punch his body, punch So his I let go, punch and his ended this fight by bringing down an odyssey of pain. Yes, again, again, yes. Punch his it seemed like this match could be mine. They're going to add up the points to see who won. The Elon Dix actually pointed out 20 points to him and 18 points to him. Just three points away from a win. In 500 BC, I would have had this guy out flat. But it looks like those penalties cost me the match. I couldn't be too upset with my performance, though. It was a great fight. I'll tell you what. It was awesome just to step in the ring against a Pancration world champion and mix it up. I mean, I don't know all the rules. I don't know all the regulations. I broke some. You don't mean to do that, but the real thing is you tested yourself as a man against another man. We got to test our honor and test our valor, and that's what Pancration's all about. I had become a link in a chain of elite martial artists that stretched back through the Battle of 300 Spartans at Thermopylae, Alexander the Great, and other warriors whose names have long been lost in the midst of time.